Championship Finals. Fusion rather convincingly taking out game one there on Infernal Shrines, and now we're on Dragonshire starving. Indeed, Skimmy, and on the left-hand side, the blue side, the left side is the place to be. We do see Gustin 5, KVA playing Joanna, Kruven on Brightwing, and Aegon on Zagara, Arcana on Thrall, and of course, last but not least, John on Falstad. That's it, and on the right-hand side, once again, Zul being played by Demise. Stoosh is on Rhaegar, Lahal was playing Sylvanas, Ai Wei on Li Ming, and it's Moops on Stitches. Indeed, and uh, you know what, Skimmy, the best way to start off any ANZ game is to run to the mid and have a wee bit of a tussle, so that's exactly what these two teams are going to be doing here. Yeah, well that's exactly it, and I mean, this fight's really going to be set up by uh, oh, Moops, I should say, getting a good hook, the hook goes onto KD, not the target they're looking for, but I mean, looking at these talents, uh, interesting choices that really um, jump out to me is the fact that Thrall has gone for Season Marksman. Uh, not something we commonly see coming out of him at all. Yeah, indeed. No, of course, I would say that we normally do see the Chain Lightning being picked up. But, uh, of course, Zagara all running, already running to the top lane there. And Moops been continuing to be aggressive. But who do you think is the best person to go up against the Zagara at the top lane there? Uh, it's going to be Zol. Obviously, has the best wave player to match up against. The Sylvanas will just get bullied out of that lane t way, way too easily. And uh, she's going to be a better choice to really bounce between these lanes, as you can see them doing right now. Yeah, fair enough indeed. So Demise sitting up the top there, of course he does look like he's having a bit of difficulty and of course I would say that is due to the Mutalisks and well, Hydralisks at the, well, Hydralisk the early stages of the game, Mutas at the later stages of the game there. And Moops of course is trying to be such a nuisance with those hooks, it's so pesky. Yeah, he's just really trying to get into the mix and um, find fights where he can. He's a very beefy target so he's not going to be afraid to take a bit of beatings here and there. But you know, this top lane is going to bounce back and forth between each... Uh, player Demise will have the advantage in actually pushing it due to the skeletons, but yep. Nagon's actually had the poke advantage. He's gone for the shrine capture. He's forced Demise to actually fully recall back to base. They've got the bot shrine as well, and now it's going to be a case of how well they can coordinate this for the capture in mid. And how well can Moops actually defend this? Because he's got a hook. I mean, he's got the slams for the interrupts. But you know, as soon as those cooldowns are down, it's going to be very hard for him. Felstead actually did fly up. John, oh look at this! The polymorph was just on point there, hooking the dragon eye. I'm sorry, it's a bit too late there, Moops. Really nice timing there by Kruven. Really do like that. But why is Demise staying up at the top lane? Well, he's just trying to soak as much as he can. There's no need to have everybody to the, uh, the lane. Otherwise, you just fall even further behind an XP. But, yeah. I mean, the real talking point, as we mentioned, the coordination was absolutely yeah, on really fire. Nice. Uh, the Polymorph came at the best moment possible, but the Bone Prism actually starving. What's happening here? Oh, Kruven getting a bit caught out here. He is going to be putting towards the bottom lane to help with his bot character KVA there, of course. The solo tank going up against Lahal. And that's going to be a pretty hard matchup for Lahal. They're not going to be able to punch on too hard. And uh, look at Demise having a bit of difficulty up here as well. So Nagon really playing to his strengths here. Got his creep spread starting to go down quite nicely. But the pushing power is quite equal on the side of Demise there, I would have to say. Oh, the hook actually coming out into John. But yeah, the story of this top, like, uh, top matchup really is the fact that, you know, Zagara is getting a lot of trade. She's not too fast on the actual lane itself. She's more obsessed with the fact that she can just bully the mines out yeah. and negate his entire character purpose. Do you think it would be, in, in the case of what you're talking about there, she's actually going for more of a brawly style so that she doesn't have to deal with them as often and maybe the team themselves, Custom 5, won't have to deal with Zola as often as well? Yeah, well, she's just there. really understanding the matchup. And yeah. She knows that if she just tries to go for the wave clear game, she is going to lose. Yeah. And she's then end up playing into Zul's hands. But by uh, focusing a lot of the attention, as you can see her do right now, on towards Zul in these trades, she just really can negate what he can do and forces out an early bone prison or yeah. bone uh, bone armor yeah. as you can see there of course and uh, Zul just such a dangerous character if you get caught in the wrong mindset there but we are seeing the team Gustin 5 rotate towards the down to this hard camp I believe this is the first time this this camp has been picked up this game and a quite a nice timing as well with the easy camp that is down there as well but uh, of course their response to that being a fusion, they are going to be rotating down to the bot lane. They do notice that there's a lot of pressure going down here. Maybe we're going to see a fight skimming. Yeah, maybe we will indeed. I mean, Faust has just gone up to the top lane. The Polymorph is good. So is the Bone Prism. It's starving. They're going for yeah, a fight. Yeah, here we go. It looks like the roots are coming out. Arcane is going dangerously low here. And John has come to help them out indeed. But Kruven, you know they have to back out here. It's just a bit too dangerous. And all the while they said, you know what? Don't worry. Don't worry, boys. We've got to go up the top lane. Keep soaking. Just survive. Move back, and now Thrall's actually running up towards that hard camp to pick up another one, so I really like that play by them. Yeah, you can see that uh, Fusion were really trying to force something there. They had yeah. Demise that in bot lane for a very long time, and you know, Inagon was completely locked up by the fact that that Merc camp was picked mm. up, so you know, Fusion a little bit upset there. They didn't really find a kill or anything substantiate yeah. from that engage, but you know, they're going to find uh, the next Shrine's activating in 15 seconds, and 
they're going to try and redeem themselves from the last one. So, what would you say is Tootsie's aim here? Like, with the Stitches, I immediately look at Stitches and Zorro and I think, Pit Comp. They want to get the hook into a Bone Prism, really blow someone up and move their pressure across the map. But what, what do you think about that? Yeah, definitely they want to try and just find a target they can blow up straight away and uh, really abuse the fact that if a Wailing Arrow comes across, there is no more, yeah. um, there is no Sundering, and there's no Gust. Yeah. So definitely the Wailing Arrow uh, coming out of the hole is going to be the one to watch for because it's really going to be crucial in these fights going yeah. favourable for Fusion. So which ultimate do you think we'll see from uh, Stitches as well? Because, I mean, either or could work. He is the front line, he is the solo tank, so I guess, you know, with that poison, could very well be effective. Yeah, yeah the bar will most likely be the, the option here. We don't really see Gorge too much nowadays. Yeah. Um, doesn't really offer too much to the uh, fighting situation. His bar will just offer a lot of slow, a lot of healing, and uh, gives him a lot more uh, tankiness, if you will. Yeah, bit of a tussle going down there, Skimmy, but I don't think it'll be able to pick up there. But as well, we can switch our attention to the top lane here. Kruven getting a, a bit of damage taken up to him, but nice flying. Uh, Kano and John coming to back up the team for Custom 5 here. Polymorph already being optimized, taking a lot of damage. Here he goes again with another Polymorph, and he is going down indeed. So two for none exchange. They are going to pick up this Dragonite uh, Shrine at the top, but no one to respond to the pressure on the bot lane. So, of course, training out the Shrines there. They're going to have to deal with this in, uh, in their own time. Yeah, so you can really see the uh, just the ability mm. to force a fight when you have that global pressure. You sort of teleport the phase shift in mm. uh, from the Brightwing, then the, uh, the flight up as well from Faust, and what looked like an easy 1v1 situation quickly became uh, a man up fight. Yeah, yeah. For Custom Fire, but look at that again, Starving. They pick up an, another dragon, highly uncontested. And, they're actually um, still in the golems too. Oh, massive hook coming out onto an easy camp there as well. So <laughs> I bet you when he would have heard the sound animation go off and they would have turned around to blow him up, and it was just like, oh, it's an easy camp, damn. So bad luck there. But we do see, you know, the whole team for Gustin 5 is actually rotating down. This is a smart play. Why, Skimmy? Because they have their level 10s. Oh, the Sundering comes through. The punt action to moves as well. But look at that. They're not phased at all to burn ultimates because they can find kills. Doesn't matter if it's one target. Mm. They're going to find the kill. And instantly the dragon finishes off with that flame breath. Just really using Charizard to... Uh, yeah. The best of ability. <laughs> yeah, they used uh, Water Pistol, but uh, unfortunately it wasn't very effective against John there. He's a fire <laughs> Pokemon, so he's just going to waltz all over that wee puddle you threw at him. But uh, nice wee hook going out there. Doesn't manage to connect with anything. No team to roll back him up anyway, but Demise. You know, he's been doing this in uh, a couple of the games he's been playing today. Really liking that split push and, and in a bad situation, trying to make the most of it. But, you know, arguable, or do you think that's a, a good play by him? Uh, yes and no. I mean, you know, when, when the dragon is being captured, uh, because it was locked up by Fausto, that's one less ultimate you need to be concerned about, especially yeah. the Gust, because uh, it negates a lot of what Stitches is trying to do there. So, I mean, it's questionable as to whether or not that was the right decision. Mm. I would have preferred to have seen him fight because they're on an even talent field. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day... They are an XP disadvantage as well, which may uh, actually affect them in the later stages of the game. But look at this, give me a fight actually breaking out a wee bit here. Might get this easy cam, but they are having to go awfully deep for that. Look at the positioning there. Nice! Oh, we Gust. Gust there, and that really starts things off. And oh, over the wall, a nice more over the wall. A lot of over the wall action, dodging that poison over. Very nice positioning by Arcana and his crew there. KVA and Kruven going to take the front line. Kruven actually looking dangerously low on that bright wing. Poison over, ticking away. Is he gonna live? No, he is not, unfortunately. But that is a one for five exchange. Gust in five, more like I will kill five for one. Bright wing going down there, but more. Oh, what happened there, Skimmy? I feel as if, personally, Gust in five have the better comp for these. Um close knit choke yeah, spots. We saw it there as Because well. you see the gust just comes out, they're all slowed out, and then the more just comes through and just completely yeah. separates everyone. So they took out two members, the bless shield came through as well. How patient were they as well? Like, I saw actually Thrall moving back and forth behind the wall. We also saw Anagon playing this guy, moving back and forth behind the wall, just using those walls to their advantage. The poison Nova came out, Thrall didn't get touched, he actually sidestepped it. So I really like that, that they're taking the time to look out for Demise and those, uh, and those massive ultimates there, because it's not something you want to be caught out there. I feel as if the comp that's uh, from Fusion is really looking to try and find picks in more open oriented spaces. Yeah. Then when uh, the fight is a 4v5 in favour of them, they can then look to sort of force those, even more force those fights yeah. in those more risky spots that are favourable for Gustin 5. And as you can see, though, they paid the price as a result. Yeah, Moobs doesn't even know what's going on here. He doesn't actually know that they're on the hard camp. He might have a fair idea, but no pings have gone out as far as I'm aware. Pings coming out from Gustin 5, though, just actually letting the team know, you know what, I think Stitches actually is around here. They are going to back off, however. Yeah, they're going to back off. They're just going to go trade out for the Shrines. It looks as if Brightwing there took out the bot one. Nice. And uh, prevents 
Uh, Fusion from finding themselves their very first uh, Dragon to start this game off, but he was assisting the Mercenaries, the Knight Camp pushing in Bob, that's going to force that rotation now. Level 14 has been picked up by Gustin 5, so, you know, uh, Fusion are still a half level down until they can fight on even footing, but the fight is breaking out. Yeah, Demise actually getting the Ancestral Healing, and now a nice Poison Ivan to start off the fight, dodging Arcana again. Nice Sundering coming out as well, but the Disintegrator is going on to two members of Gustin 5. Wailing Arrow coming out as well, so all members are silenced. Oh, nice, Demise actually surviving as well. Don't aggro that easy can, but KVA going down, Disintegrate, going to finish him off. Another reset. Best play here is to walk away for Team Gustin 5. And, uh, I, you know what? I actually thought they'd qu look quite good for Custom 5 for a moment, but I think the Li Ming damage really brought them on top there, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, well, as soon as Li Ming got the resets, it just uh, really went from there. Mm. Custom 5, unfortunate to not find that kill on towards Demise. So, so dangerously low. Uh, but he just evades death just a little bit longer. He's the Necromancer, so he doesn't want to go into his own bone graph. Oh, is this going to be their first Dragon Knight as well? So, oh, oh, no, I, it's yeah, not, because no. Brightwing, once again, utilizing that global XP, go into the top lane, taking oh, it out. Beautiful. And forces that demise to rotate now. And now there's five healthy members of Gustin 5 ready to force a fight. Well, sure does have bright wings and a bright mind to make up plays like that. Zul has rotated top. He doesn't have poison over. So I guess that's actually quite a good play because what that means is, well, he doesn't have an ultimate to use. But uh, they did pick up that uh, the shrine at the bottom lane, delaying that Dragonite even further. KVA coming in with a nice condemn. They're going to start off a five. Blessed Shield being popped as well. Polymorph onto the back line. A stooge. They're trying to get this ancestral healing out. Pop, but oh my god, look at the damage. This is so aggressive by John. He's just really trying to push that uh, good old Rhaegar out. Mighty Gust being used on Demise there. A nice Sundering to establish a kill onto them as well. They can push further than they were before. And John and the rest are really just trying to force this out here. I imagine someone's going to run up to that top shrine and try and pick up that Dragonite. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. Just, so, ugh, just chases on a little bit too more. You yeah. know, Gust of Five just too aggressive. They're looking for more kills when there's no more. They've got the advantage already. They don't need to hire. Uh, yeah. They don't really need to look for any more. I mean, I'm choking on my words. I'm just kind of baffled by what they're doing. But, you know, as a result of that, they still find an opportunity. They've now taken the uh, shrine in the top lane. They've got it in the bot lane already. So they can just hang around mid now, maybe find another kill, and find themselves the very third dragon of this game. Yeah, well, you know what? Nice plays by both teams here. KVA, Arcana taking the front line once again. They're just really trying to push people off these Dragonites so they can pick it up. I do imagine Aww. they will pick this up, so <laughs> a bit of a cheeky kill there on the back line onto Zul. So they managed to grab themselves a kill there, which is going to make picking up their Dragonite so much easier. If we quickly Look at the go flick of the wrist as Arcana Look at the wrist. The wrist, finds the kill. <laughs> is the sacrificial lamb, or is he? Because Brightwing is coming in! Oh, now. is he going to survive? Polymorph being popped onto the leaming I won. Coming out, why did you save him? Oh, nice Wailing Arrow coming out as well. They are going to push that back with a Dragonite Ice Block being popped by oh. that crew in there. And Arcana is still alive. No, he does go down. Look how cheeky Arcana is. He's running away all gleefully like I just baited my team. Yeah, I baited everyone, mate. <laughs> Master baiter there. Uh, no pun intended there, but the Dragonite was picked up for Team Gustin 5. And, oh, that was a big play. But, uh, yeah, just pointing on what you were talking about before, Skimmy, do you think when they overextended over there, oh, do you think they overextended? I do. Yeah. Um, I do. I just think they're just too hungry for kills, and mm. they don't need to be. It's not always the case of having to wipe down three, four members, just like ultimates. One or two people, that's enough for a team to be scared. So mm. be more disciplined. Mm. We can see, as we brought up on the screen before, 26k damage apiece uh, from basically both sides' carries. But the hook comes out onto an egg on. He's definitely gone. Yeah, he doesn't have more up for this time, I'm afraid. So he does go down. Very nice hook and very nice opportunity by Moobs to establish a kill for his team and shorten down their XP advantage. So very smart indeed. John's going to be coming in. Hey, Barrel already being used. Gus being used as well. Demise coming out with the Bone Prison, but Kruven is coming in to support him here. So he is going to be quite safe. Oh, a missile is just missing by the flick of a hair there. Hair follicles are certainly being pulled out after the stress ensued by that one. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And, you know, they're going to back off now. A bit of a risky situation for them. Gustin 5 were separated, but they're going to pick up the mercenaries and once again apply that split push pressure. And as that pushes on towards the death bridge, our bread and butter favourite home, a uh, place of mm. many delightful team fights. But you know, it looks to be that Fusion are going to respond by doing the exact same. Yeah, so a bit of a mirror, I guess you could say. And we can see Gustin 5 kind of posturing around the mid lane, so maybe trying to get some pressure on down in the mid lane. But are they going to be moving across to this bot lane now, Skippy? Yeah, it would seem to be the case. I mean, uh, Gustin 5 have the advantage in this case because they have mercenaries pushing the top as opposed to the ones in the bot now. Fusion are going to use 
completely wiped out, but the fight is actually oh, going out. Here comes a fight. Sundering being popped as well. Arcana taking to the back and to the flank. So here comes KVA as well. Condemn being popped as well. Poison over, only connecting onto one player being KVA. So a bit of a misplay there. Arcana needs a bit of healing himself, so he's going to be popping his spells. Oh, look at all the damage coming out. IY is trying to get away. Blessed Shell getting onto all three members, but only managing to pick up Li Ming. But you saw that. The max bounce rage. The, bow, wow, wow. the, old, the old ping pong plays are not oh. finished there. So I think they find another one. It's four for none. Plus the mercenaries now on the death bridge, just punching on, saying we'll find another advantage where there was none. But you know, mm. it's just a lot more discipline now. It looks yeah. to be that they've just realised what they've been doing wrong, and now they're going to find themselves a uh, opportunity to get a keep in the mid. I'm quite surprised that Arcane actually managed to live uh, while pushing their back. Oh, but look at this. This is a bit risky. Stoosh is in the back line, trying to defend his buildings. But oh man, if they played that a bit faster, may have been able to get themselves a kill. I really, there. really like this player. They got the keep. Uh, very low, they're going to try and push this one in, they back out just a little bit, so scared they push, yep. or oh, possibly, possibly, possibly could have <laughs> got that one, but they decide against it. This is the safer option, they're going to back away, they realise that the shrine is now available, KV is going to go there, you got Faustin in the bot lane. Oh, beautiful. And it's another dragon, I don't think Fusion have got a single one. Yeah, nah, you're easily going to be able to pick up this one, good old Anagon, turning from a bug into a dragon, so if that is an evolution, I don't know what is there, <laughs> so absolutely amazing plays. He is going to be waltzing up the mid lane and Anagon just scabbled. Come at me, mate. Yeah, he is exactly in that voice as well. The hook comes through on Mercs, he gets it shunted into the wall and gets absolutely plastered yeah. as his face gets smacked upon. But you know, now they're going to open up another opportunity to keep in the middle, is now available. And the minion wave is still pushing healthily top. Yeah, I kind of took a bit of damage there, but they've got the buildings that they needed. They've got the level 20 advantage now. What are they going to do with it? Are they going to go in for a play or are they going to let this dragon art expire and just kind of do what they need to do with the building? The siege damage is really what you're looking for in this game. So every time they pick up a dragon art, going to be so much stronger. Yes, I mean, level 20. I mean, it's the biggest deciding factor in this one. They don't want to fight. They have a con that's looking to fight with picks, but they can't. So they're very contradicting spot for them right now, Starvin. Yeah, but here comes that hook onto John actually getting out of there so fast, nice and prompt there. But uh, of course, they do not have an Aegon for the more. He is stuck in the Dragonite for the time being, the next 20 seconds, in fact. Trying to do as much damage as they can to these structures, get as much worth from this Dragonite as they possibly can. I don't think Fusion should let them just waltz on out of here, though. They might be able to get a cheeky kill. KVA, not the person you want to be hooking back, though. And Moops is just like, come here, please! Oh, okay, no. Ball to the Storm actually coming out strong here, and, and poor Polymorph out onto him. Gust not actually being used too effectively there. I, why? Why did you pop that ult? It's such a risky spot. He does go down. Demise looks like he's going to be going down as well, but no. Condemn being used by KVA, trying to draw the team in a bit closer. More being popped on the Stitches. Don't know if they want to follow up on this one, but it looks like they are. Here we go, the Polymorph being popped once again onto the Stitches, into the back line. Demise going down solo as well. KVA, are you going to go down low? Yes! He lives on a slither of HP. Oh, massive plays by Gustin 5 there, really trying to trade out that damage between the... They were all like tanks there. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, Moops has been really unlucky to not land these hooks right now, and um, as a result, it's a very interesting situation from right now, but the real story of that fight was the fit ahead level 20. Uh, Indestructible wasn't popped, thankfully, um, but, you know, with the ability to have Bolt with a Storm as well as the uh, Storm Shield, it just gave him a lot more team fight pressure. Yeah. Uh, I really don't think if they were level 20 they would have won that fight because it, it was a bit of a sloppy fight I think you would agree Yeah, me. agreed. So, yeah, I do think um, as far as that goes being a talent tier down Fusion actually played that really nicely, you know, they managed to get um, a lot of damage pumped out But unfortunately, you know the damage from the level 20 talents and the sustain from the storm shield just really allowed them to stay in that fight a bit longer than they may have Been able to without it. So, you know what they're gonna do now reset. They are gonna reset and now, before uh, Fusion pick up level 20, just going to go over some of the talents once again. You can see Stitch is going for this more hybrid build. He's building more tank at the start, but sort of evening it out with some slam talents uh, to finish things off. Interesting to see what he takes at level 20. Most likely the hardened shield would be my best uh, bit here. He's been trying to get into the oh! mix of it, but John really abusing the epic mount. Yeah, but he actually popped Gust as well, Skimmy. Not sure if he caught that. So Sundering being popped. Oh my, Lahal so out of position there. But mind you, so is John. He might actually go down. Poison over being popped by Demise. Moops is actually going into that front line as well. Ice block being popped by the Brightwing. Stoosh going to go down by Arcana with the Envenom in the background. And Moops taking a lot of damage himself. Disintegrate. Blessed Shield being popped. IY going down so so dangerously low here, but KVA can't really follow up in a Nagon. The rest of them, they don't really have the mobility to secure a kill here. Oh! So much damage. Wow. Um, yeah, just, just a series of fights is going all over the show, and just people a little bit sloppy, um, just, just finding themselves caught out of position. You know, once again, it's a numbers game, so uh, Gust of Five 
get a great fight in a great situation. Another dragon has spawned. It's another dragon that they can pick up. And with it being 90 minutes into the game, with the keyboard he uh, dropped in mid, and another one dropped very low in the top, they might decide just to finish things off. Yeah, and they might be able to with that power of the dragon art. They're actually going to fight here, but the dragon art's been picked up again, once again, I should say, by the Zagara. So she's going to be out of the fight. Oh, Moob's taking a lot of damage, and here comes the big charge from an Aegon. Going to separate the team there. Don't want Demise to be part of that. And I think a smart play here, Skimmy, might possibly to keep the Dragon Knight as long as you can and keep Demise out of these fights. And look at that. Knocks him out. Oh, the Boulder Storm from Arcana. They're really trying to force that fight, but you yeah, know, they're very unfortunate not to get the kill into Moob's crew. So, and Arcana doing great jobs together, but they're very low on both health and mana. They're going for the core now. Thrall's already gone. The punch comes out towards Demise. Is it going to be enough? The Dragon isn't that tanky, bear in mind, Starving. It's down to 50%, but the core's down to 80 The Goss comes out now. They're flanking around, Starving. Is this going to be the game deciding thing? Is but they're it? actually taking damage from the keep as well. This is so disastrous. The core's down to 20%. It might just be enough. Crew than KVA. Oh! And the it is going to be enough. A risky shot call, but it paid off dividends. Mm. Yeah, definitely paid off a nag on having a wee bit of a dance there. And as they call GG for that game. So Gustin 5, evening it out for a 1 for 1. And uh, we're going to be taking this for the third match today for Fusion versus Gustin 5.